This time on Pihar Rescue. Oh, very hard. <laughs> Another beach with familiar problems. Hands up, hands up. Rescue, rescue, rescue. Nine people are taken out in a rip. And a status one emergency at the hot water beach car park. Notified the hey, five gate, we've got the first aid. I'm still a bit shocked, you know. At Piha, a thick blanket of cloud and harsh easterly winds keep people tucked up in the warmth of indoors, including most of the lifeguards. In the club's medical room, lifeguard and paramedic Dave Wood refreshes the team's medical skills. Just going through um, the basics of um, CPR and um, other things that we uh, come across on the beach. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It shows. It is the emergency procedure providing rescue breathing and heart compressions to an individual who is not responsive. Parts of a lifeguard's rescue kit is an automated external defibrillator, an AED. It delivers a short, powerful electric shock to the heart, shock helping the heart shock. to regain its natural rhythm. Stay clear of pain. Meanwhile, at Hotwater Beach, training is exercised in true summer fashion. Here, the lifeguards train beneath the water to increase the lungs' capacity. Hotwater Beach is a popular beach on the east coast of the Coromandel Peninsula, 175 kilometers from Auckland. Its name comes from underground hot springs which filter up through the sand between the high and low tide points. Water up to temperatures of 64 degrees Celsius in places escapes to the surface, forming a hot water pool. <laughs> In stark contrast to Piha, the club's facilities here are basic. A tent is erected daily and a caravan is used for cover. Local farmer and volunteer of the year, Gary, is the club's backbone and patrol captain. Well, welcome to Hotwater Beach, or probably known as Hotty, by the local guards here. That's what we call ourselves on the radios. It's a fairly good surf beach, probably one of the best ones on the east coast. You've got a lot of different breaks that surfers come for. But not without his dangers. Surf New Zealand's done a survey in the last three or four years where they went around 100 surf beaches in New Zealand. And from the information I've been given, we came out too behind Piha Mirawa as one of the most dangerous beaches in New Zealand. On board to assist them today is Piha Club president and lifeguard Peter Brown. Who might have to swallow his west coaster's perception of the east coast waves and hold on. A lot of the ones we get coming here have no understanding of rips or big waves or anything like that. They get off a plane in Auckland, seen a brochure overseas of Hotwater Beach and come straight down here from that and then see this beautiful idyllic conditions and go straight into the waves after sitting in a hot pool. The five-star surroundings might not be matched by the club's facilities. Uh, we're just going to go through our beautiful room and this tent here. As you can see, we've got all our first aid stuff on the side there, defib, whiskey bags, oxygen. Uh, we're lucky enough to actually have two towers. Technically known as Potty Tower 1. And as you can first see, right down the far end, we've got another tower down there. Here, they, um, a lot of dedicated people. Their guards are equally as good as the Piha guards. Just, um, gee whiz, I don't know how they can work out of their conditions. You know, like it's so hard, they're living out of a tent. And, and the patrol tower's a few years old, a rusty old thing, and um, you know, you've got to wonder how, how they can keep the motivation up to um, keep doing what they do and proven they speak for themselves, their records, their records unbelievable. Last summer, the Hottie lifeguards rescued more than 100 people. Behind the car park, a local has offered the club free storage space. Uh, we're just coming onto the section where we store our gear. This is the parking for the local uh, Trust Waikato Hot Water Beach lifeguards. Spare IRB, life jackets, a few extra engines, the fuel. These are where we charge our uh, radios. We've got a solar panel on the roof. So this is just how we, this is how it's run at Hot Water Beach. It's early afternoon. On flag duty is lifeguard Lance. Today it's, uh, it's a bit tricky because it, it's real deceiving. Um, when you get out there, it looks like it's you can swim anywhere and it's all right, but if you get into the wrong place, like in the rip or anything, it, it just takes you out just like that. On the elevated bank, 10 lifeguards watch and wait, ready for action. 
with a further four between the flags, while Piha lifeguards Peter Brown and Gary are stationed at Hotty Tower number two. It's a little bit different than our ones, but um, it does the job. It's got full coverage of the beach. It's 3.15 p.m. Andre has growing concerns about the flash rips encroaching the flagged area. What's it like out there? Do you think we should still have the flags up? Out. <laughs> We're sort of having a bit of an iffy about the flags because it is certainly a bit rippy and currenty all through there, but it's sort of the best spot on the beach for all these people to swim. Almost immediately, Andre's concerns are realised. A large group are all caught in the strong current south. Without delay, he puts his crew on full alert and notifies Gary at Tower 2. Yeah, Gary, Gary, rescue, rescue, rescue. This is Hottie Base. We have multiple swimmers heading out and rip on the right-hand side. We've got IRB going out now and multiple tube swimmers. Yeah, Connor, get the IRB. Yeah, Josh, go with him, crewman. Andre, it's Gary, yeah. Thank you to the IRB. I think it's a flag. We've got a few tube swimmers out as well. Lance, already at the flags, is the first to react and gets in the water. Dropping the flags during patrol means there is no safe place to swim. With all his rescue crews organized, champion swimmer Andre decides he needs to assist. The tube swimmers race out using the same rip that took the swimmers out. The first group of people manage themselves back in without assistance. Two more lifeguards and Andre continue and signal the IRB for assistance further out. Connor and Josh are not far behind in the IRB. While some are able to get in themselves with the help of the tubes, others still need an IRB pickup. You all good? The waves are pummeling down on everyone as they fight against the rip. One girl is in great distress. Breaking waves make it difficult to make a pickup. Finally, a lull in the set and the lifeguards drag her into the IRB. All others are safely assisted back to shore. Lifeguards Josh and Connor do a last sweep to make sure everybody is safe. Uh, you happy for the flags going back up, and it's so well. Yeah, I think we'll put them back up, but we might put them um, down there. Yeah, we might put them back up there. Yeah, we'll put them back up there. This holiday maker sure found herself in hot water, and just not the kind she was expecting. Is this, um, the really strong like we were fine but then it like took me far away and I, I can swim very well like I was trying to be like there but then it like pushed me and I was quite scared I'm still a bit shocked you know so I just helped them in two of them in and um, they're really thankful for that and uh, it's just another day yeah hotty <laughs> the flags are repositioned and Andre reopens the beach you know, thank you thank you so much like seriously but I was so so scared how are you feeling now? I mean, it's quite shocked still, you know, yeah. Happy fast though. No, very fast when it goes. It's one of those flash rips just coming and they're gone. My beach at Piha just open span of water, big surf here. Rips going left and right, reefs out there at half tide and low tide. 
tricky place, tricky place. It doesn't matter if you are swimming at a notorious West Coast beach or on the East Coast. Rips can form instantly on any beach in New Zealand. These people drifted 100 meters in a very short time span. I remember when I was uh, five or six, uh, really young, and I was a little nipper in the speedos and had the little hap on. We, we used to come down here and play beach flags and used to see the lifeguards out there and they'd do all their training. And I, it was really cool and I really wanted to be like that and, and you know, help people who got in trouble and save someone. It was really cool. And Lance treats all rescues with the same care and attention. Right now, he helps out an injured young girl. No, Albeit cut by a spade, the pain is masked with a ride in the Bumblebee, the club's rescue vehicle which can go on land and in water. Yeah, we'll just go up here to see these two um, sort of camping chairs. And in the absence of running water, her wound is washed off with a drink bottle. Meanwhile, at the back of the new flagged area, two people are drifting further and further out to sea. Hands up, hands up. Lifeguard Emily backs up fellow colleagues Josh, who's already in the water. Rescue, rescue, rescue. Unlike Piha at Hotwater Beach, most rescues are performed by tube swimmers. The couple is slowly getting closer to shore with the help of a confident swimmer. Now they're standing, I think, now. Yeah, we were both swimming and then we couldn't really... We, we didn't feel like we were making any progress. <laughs> and then got a bit of a panic situation. <laughs> oh, you all right? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky yeah. that guy was out the back there, helped us. Yeah. Did you feel the panic set in though? Asking for help before being truly exhausted is the life-saving move some people don't make soon enough. <laughs> it's an abrupt end to this girl's day. It's a bit of a shock, For the lifeguards, it's time to wrap up anyway. Gary reflects on their typical day at Hottie. Oh, I've had a few moments where people have got themselves sucked out of the flags and gone sideways and these flash, flash rips we get here from time to time. There's one young girl that's cut her fingers with a spade. Just a normal day at Hotwater Beach. Typical here, of course, means the daily dismantling of the medical facility. And as the case with every camping trip, the bag is always too small. Oh, it's not too bad most days, it's yes. a bit of a pain. Sometimes it can have its bad right, days. We did get these little things. Yeah. We got the cable ties on the zip now, so it's a tad of easier. So. Yeah. The caravan is loaded up and transported back to the storage area. 8.30 p.m. and a few holiday makers enjoy the evening sun. Suddenly, a group of people gather in the car park. A man has collapsed. An ex-nurse is on the scene, followed by local resident and lifeguard Lance. The patient's vital signs, airway, breathing and circulation, have been checked by the nurse and he is put in the recovery position. So what, what happened? I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just collapsed. Lance gets the first aid kit out of storage and activates the emergency alarm. Oh, I've just notified the high five gate, we've got the first aid. Yeah. Uh, just high blood pressure. Yeah, just high blood pressure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. But is he breathing? Yeah, he's good. He's just pulse strong. He's breathing good. Can you check again? But he's not. He's not responding to me. He's not responding to me. Lance checks the man's breathing again with a stethoscope. The man is becoming less responsive. He has a pulse in his breathing, so all that can be done at this point is to monitor him and provide reassurance until help arrives. Five minutes after the emergency call, the volunteer fire brigade arrive. Lance hands over to them and they reassess the patient. He is still conscious of breathing. Aside from the St. John's Ambulance, Westpac Rescue has also been called. Oh, when they first ran over, I just thought maybe someone fell over or something. They said seizure, went over there, and there's already a nurse that already had a recovery position and stuff. So I mean, that's all I, I know, kind of recovery position, make sure he's breathing and, and his pulse is strong. Suddenly, the man deteriorates. A recheck of his vital signs now reveal he is unresponsive and not breathing normally. CPR commences immediately. A defibrillator is attached to the patient to determine if the patient requires a shock. The defibrillator will not allow shock to be applied unless a shockable heart rhythm is detected. Through the continuation of CPR, hopefully this will be established. R50 means an intensive care paramedic. The use of the defibrillator can increase the chance of survival by up to 40%. Lifeguard Stacy has come to assist to prepare a landing area for Westpac. Um, Ian's sent for the helicopter to come in and maybe go to more critical care. Um, so yeah, so we're going to land the helicopter down here. Yeah, I'll stand here, you stand down there. The family are constantly updated. The lifeguards mark out a landing zone with strobe lights, as sunset is only 20 minutes away. Put the on the bottom, put it on the ground. The intensive care paramedic aboard the helicopter can provide advanced life support to the patient. This may involve securing the patient's airway with a breathing tube or administering cardiac drugs. Just a secondary collapse, nothing else we don't think, no trauma. The Westpac paramedic places a breathing tube directly into the patient's lungs. Suction is readied as regurgitation of stomach contents is common during CPR, and the paramedic needs a clear view of the patient's airway. And he had a pulse and he was breathing. Yeah, he had a pulse and he was like kind of like yeah, making like sounds like uh, and yeah. like kind of falling, so I think it was a seizure, and yeah. he was kind of moving, and then so there's an ex nurse here, and she was just choking the back, and then yeah. kept feeling the pulse that was there, yeah. and then I, I got to the ambulance, I oh, rang the fire brigade first. Yeah. got them to come out in the ambulance yeah. I ran up. So what would you say uh, from the time, you know, you assessed the patient first until yeah. the fire service arrived, yeah. how much time elapsed up? Uh, probably five minutes or seven minutes. Yeah, okay. It was quick, it was real quick. Rob the paramedic suctions vomit from the patient's airway and inserts a breathing tube. Once the tube is in place, chest compressions can be performed without pausing for the ventilations. The defibrillator is charged.
But when Rob assesses the heart rhythm, it is not shockable. Sadly, the rhythm indicates that the patient is now deceased. Rob now has the difficult task of communicating this news to the family. Not, not a good outcome for the days on a day like this. Um, nothing really we could do. I mean, they tried the hardest, the ambulance to still revive him, but he couldn't get his heart started again, so... Um, the helicopter paramedics just called time of death and family's pretty upset and distraught. The, I think the sons are trying to shake him, trying to wake him up. Yeah, not feeling good. Uh, it's like a real heavy feeling, especially around like everyone you see. Everyone's faces, I mean, they tried hard to get the guy going. It was, it was a heavy feeling. Like, um, you feel now, and I can just imagine the family right now, it'd just be, oh, it'd be so hard for them. Like, you know, losing a, could be a granddad or something, or, or dad. Next time on Piha Rescue, two adventurous swimmers ignore the flag barrier. Right there, right there, arm up, arm up. Keep You're gonna flip it. <laughs> Two famous Olympians open the floodgates. We're digging a drench. We're, we're training for the Olympics uh, for windsurfing. And two teenage girls go missing after patrol was ended. Surf con. Did you please activate the that squad? 50 minutes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.